What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of The Beer Chasers. I'm Preston, and today we're getting back into some home brewing. So this is going to be my second attempt at a peanut butter chocolate stout. Made one a year ago, wasn't exactly happy the way it came out, so I reformulated the recipe. We're going to go over that recipe, we're going to show you the brew day, we're going to crack it open, taste it, and review it, see how it turned out. So I'll stick around, check it out. All right, so up first, let's talk about the grain bill and the ingredients for the peanut butter chocolate stout. So uh, at first, I have to mention that I based my recipe off of one of my favorite milk chocolate stouts, Muhu by Terrapin. Um, they're actually one of the cool breweries that lists like the grains and the ingredients of the beers on the website if you go look it up. So uh, if you've ever brewed a stout before, they don't give you all the, the percentages, but if you've ever brewed a stout, you can kind of deduce what you need to add based on what they use. So I use that kind of as my guideline in building this recipe. Um, also, I have to warn that what you're going to see in the brew video is for an eight and a half gallon batch. I've been doing like eight and a half gallons on my 10 gallon system here. Um, but the, uh, the recipe I'm going to give you is for five and a half gallons. So at the end of it, you know, with, with your equipment losses, you should be getting five gallons based on this recipe. So let's just go through it. So for first, the, uh, the base malts, we're going to use 14 pounds of uh, two row. Pretty sure I use raw two row. Um, use one and a quarter pound of flaked oats. Um, I wanted to add something that gave a little more uh, thickness and mouthfeel to the beer. Um, flaked oats, you know, generally more used for a, a, an oatmeal stout per se, but I wanted to add just enough to, uh, to help boost some of the mouthfeel. because so we're going for a thick kind of chocolatey dessert beer, so I want it to kind of be thick and heavy in the mouth. Uh, use one pound of Crystal 80, pretty, pretty straightforward crystal malt there. It's going to add a little bit of uh, caramel sweetness to the beer. Uh, use one pound of chocolate wheat, so this is uh, some of the roasted ingredients we're using to kind of give it that stout characteristic. Uh, chocolate wheat is not the most roasty of the, uh, the roasted ones, um, but it also gives an appearance of chocolate. So I figured since we're using a chocolate milk stout, uh, we need a little bit of roasted ingredients, so let's use one that kind of lends to both chocolate and roast. Uh, also use eight ounces of roasted barley, pretty straightforward in your uh, stout recipes. Uh, only use eight ounces because, again, this is like a milk stout, so I don't want it to be like super roasted over the top. I want the chocolate and the peanut butter to be the star. Uh, but you do want a little bit of roast character, so we added eight ounces of that roasted barley. And to round it off, we have four ounces of Carafa Special 3. Uh, it's another uh, roasted malt. This is one of the least roasty malts of them all. It's the special d -Hus version of it. So essentially this is going to lend mostly just some of color, uh, but you will get a little roastiness from this as well. And that's it for the grain bill. Uh, for hopping, we have a half ounce of nugget at 60 minutes should get you about 20 IBUs. Uh, of course, that's going to vary depending on the alpha acids of the nugget you're using, the place you're getting it from, the year they're from, and all that stuff. But uh, basically use enough nugget to char uh, target 20 IBUs at a 60 minute boil. Uh, we use half ounce of Williamette at 30 minutes. I got seven IBUs out of that for a total of 27. Pretty much middle of the road for a uh, sweet stout if you look at the style guide. Uh, being that it is a milk stout, we're going to add some milk sugar, so one pound of lactose in the boil. Um, we're also going to use some PB2, so that's some of the special sauce here uh, when making these peanut butter beers is how do you get the peanut butter flavor? So you could naturally de-oil some real peanut butter over the course of a couple weeks when I understand it takes, uh, wicking the oil off with paper towels and paper bags and trying to uh, defat it yourself because those fats and oils will kill the head retention in your beer, so you got to get rid of them. Uh, but a lot of people, from what I understand and talking to, use uh, a product called PB2 or PB Fit in our case. Um, it's basically a powdered peanut butter that's already been de-oiled and defatted. You generally add it to a couple teaspoons of water and you make yourself some peanut butter. Uh, so we're going to add uh, 30 ounces of this in the boil. And essentially, it, it's one big giant jug of it. So it's like, we'll, we'll see if that goes. Uh, last time I used 18 ounces in the boil and I did 18 ounces in secondary. From what I understand, some people around here use it only in the boil, so I'm going to go for that approach this time around. So I'm going to use 30 ounces of it in the boil, and we'll see how it works out for us. Um, and actually, when I use it in the boil, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to pull like a gallon or two of wort uh, towards the end of the boil and mix the PB2 in there and get a nice, real good mixture, and then pour that back into the main wort. I just want to make sure it's totally like absorbed and there's no clumps, uh, especially just for my system, my chiller system. I want to make sure it's, it's nice and stirred in. So we're going to pull some wort. I'm going to stir it in, and I'm going to pour that wort back for the last couple minutes. Uh, I'm not too worried about losing any bitterness or anything from that little bit of wort being out for a few minutes. Um, we're also, this time around, going to use some peanut butter extract. So something I've been playing around with a little bit here, you know, for a long time I kind of poo-pooed extracts and didn't want to use them. Um, but I'm finding, you know, if you, if you use just a touch of these extracts, 
um, especially if you're using it mostly for aroma, you're not using it as your main flavor star, um, the extracts can actually add a good bit of depth and, and uh, aroma to these beers. I've also talked to some brewers around here, and I think a lot of them are using this peanut butter extract in their beers. It's really what makes that smell pop. And in, in addition to using some sort of real peanut butter, it really kind of helps uh, blend the two together. And that's what I've pretty much found with extracts. You know, as long as you have some natural source as well, the extracts are good when used uh, in minuscule amounts. So we're gonna use two and two thirds tablespoons. That ends up being like a little less than like uh, three ounces or something like that. It's like two and three quarter ounces, I think is what it breaks down to. The bottles are like four ounces. So we're using a little more than half a bottle. Um, I always like to play it safe with these extracts. You know, just start small. I'd rather it be not enough rather than too much. And then it puts, you know, the beer in a place where it's like, oh, it's off putting, you can't even drink it. Uh, and we're going to be using some cocoa nibs. So it is a chocolate milk style. I want to add some chocolate flavor. I'm going to use five ounces in secondary. I figured let's, let's start with one ounce per gallon. So that's a nice little something you can easily help scale with. So um, if it's not enough, you can add more. If it's too little, you know, or, you, know you take away. Uh, for the yeast and fermentation, we're going to use US05. So I went with some powdered yeast this time around, dry yeast. Uh, just trying to keep it simple, it's straightforward, pretty, pretty clean, neutral. Uh, yeast strain. I don't want to add any kind of fruitiness to it or anything like that using a, an English liquid ale strain or uh, using maybe like an Irish ale or a Scottish ale kind of like a sweet strain or whatever. Uh, we're going to mash at 156 for 60 minutes so we're hoping to extract you know a lot of that alpha amylase get some nice uh, long chain sugars in there to help keep the beer nice and sweet kind of thicker uh, mouthfeel fuller body beer. Uh, overall, we're looking for 1.090 as our starting gravity. Um, if everything goes well, we'll go down to 1.029. Uh, That'll give us a beer that's 8% ABV. Uh, I think with that out of the way, it's time to brew some beer. All right, well, thanks to the magic of television, here we have the peanut butter chocolate stout in its finished form. So we'll go for a review. Uh, we'll look at the appearance. Um, I mean, it looks pretty nice, nice and dark. Slightly see-through, definitely not like a moil, motor oil blackness, but definitely can't see through it. Looks nice, thing on appearance. I mean, I'll go to four, looks great. Let's go for the smell. <sighs> it's nice. Um, this time around, we definitely get some of that peanut butter smell. So I think that I'm gonna lend that to the, um, the extract we used. Definitely bringing out some of that peanut butter character. Doesn't smell artificial, does smell like you know, you're, you're smelling a bottle of Jif. Little faint though, I wish it were a little, little heavier, but it's definitely there. Um, you do smell some of the sweetness from the lactose. I'm not getting an overwhelming uh, sense of chocolate though. 
It's there if you fish for it. Definitely not getting any of the roastiness. You're not really getting much of a hop smell. So I think what's there is kind of muddled a little bit, but um, I'll say it's a three. You know, if I, if I bought this, I wouldn't be upset and be like, oh, it doesn't smell like a peanut butter milk stout. I mean, it's it's in style, but certainly isn't excelling in any category. So I'll, I'll give it a three. Uh, the best part, the taste. Cheers. It's nice. Um, peanut butter is definitely there. It, it's faint, just like in the smell. Um, you're getting some of the lactose sweetness. I'm not getting a ton of chocolate, uh, not a ton of roast. So kind of the smell is, is duplicating here in the taste. You know, you get a little bit of the peanut butter, um, but the chocolate, the roast get sweetness, but pretty much everything is lacking in the most part. Um, it does remind me of Muhu. It doesn't have their chocolate in it. Muhu has just got this crazy amount of chocolate. And I don't know if they're just up in the nibs like crazy or if they're, you know, if they're using a chocolate extract or something or some sort of other chocolate method. But um, it's definitely not as chocolatey as Muhu. Um, I think that the sweetness is, is very similar, but it's a little low on roast, a little low on peanut butter, a little low on chocolate. So um, I think I'll still be fair. You know, I'm going to try to be uh, I'm not super objective here because this is my beer, but I'm going to give it a three. I, I think if I bought this and I tasted it, you know, I, I wouldn't say, ew, that's not a peanut butter chocolate salad at all. I'd, I'd, I'd ding it points, but it is flirting with that three. It's pretty much, you know, it's what's on the bottle. It's what's on the box. Um, so a three. Uh, for the mouthfeel, let me give one more sip. Mouthfeel's medium. Wish there was a, a little more there, but it's nice. Um, it's definitely not thin and kind of distracting from the beer. It, it's, it's medium. It's nice. Uh, carbonation's okay. Uh, I believe I carbonated this to 2.3 volumes. So um, it's pretty much, you know, where you expect it. Head retention, I wish, was a little better. Um, so I don't know if that's, you know, some of the remaining oils or uh, some other reason. Um, the mouthfeel, I think, is probably the most lacking part. I'll give it 2.75. It's a little under what I was hoping for and expecting. So overall, where's that going to put the peanut butter chocolate stout V2? Um... I'll give it a three, you know, I, th I think the appearance looks nice, but the, the smell is pretty much a three, uh, the taste is pretty much a three, and then we kind of had that 2.75 in the mouthfeel, so I'll just give it a three all around. Um, I think it's a beer, again, if you bought it at the store, got it at the bar, or at your local, uh, you know, brewery or something like that, um, I don't think you'd be upset, you wouldn't be pushing it back in their face saying, hey, this is the peanut butter chocolate stout. Um, Still a good beer though. I'm happy I brewed it, happy I've given it an attempt, and I'm definitely gonna to work on this. This is a style I wanna nail. Um, I love these kind of dessert sweet beers, so I think it'd be awesome to be able to kind of have one that I could, I could call like my superstar. Um, so on that note, kind of what, what would I do different next time? So um, peanut butter, let's, let's address that first. You know, I think we're on the right track using some of that extract. This is definitely tasting more like the ones I've had, which kind of confirms my suspicion that a lot of these guys are also using this extract. You know, there, there's kind of this, poo-poo about it in, in the brewing world that you really shouldn't be using extracts and I don't know if people are totally uh, forthright with when they use them and kind of oh yeah yeah we just use this extract we throw it in there um, but I can tell you for sure from my experience and I've had probably about seven or eight of these peanut butter chocolate stouts in trying to, to mentally prepare and understand how to make one um, you've got to use some of this extract I think I mean maybe if you really use some natural peanuts and you get a great sourcing on it and you roast them and you know, you go through all this trouble, you might be able to get something that naturally is gonna come across just as good, if not better than something. But I think at the homebrew scale, um, that extract is definitely key to, to at least the aroma. So I know we used um, a little under three ounces, so maybe I would bump that up to three ounces or three and a quarter, or dare I caution to say, use the entire four ounce bottle. I think that might just be a little overkill. So I might just add like another tablespoon of it again uh, just, to, just to boost it just a tiny bit more. Then there's the thought of the, the PB2, the PB Fit. Like I mentioned, uh, last time I used like 18 ounces in the boil, 18 ounces in secondary. And uh, some of the advice I got from some of the breweries that brewed around here, that they only use it in the boil. So that's the approach I took this time, is just take all of it and put it in the boil. Um, I'm not sure if that's necessarily the best approach. I think I had more uh, peanut butter flavor with some in secondary sometime, uh, the last time I did it. Um, again, it's been a year ago, so it's hard to think back on it, but I, I seem to remember more of a peanut butter taste. So I'm not sure if I would go back to splitting it to some in the boil, some in the, the secondary. So probably what I would do is just to, to keep it a little more consistent and constant is maybe try more in the boil. Um, so instead of using 30 ounces, maybe, you know, up to like a full three pounds of something like uh, 48 ounces. Um, 
I also might want to use some more of the PB2 with the chocolate in it as well. So I did that last time. I think I used six ounces pre-boil, or sorry, six ounces boil, six ounces of secondary of the chocolate PB2. So maybe use the 30 ounces of the regular PB2 and then add like three more of the peanut butter and chocolate. So give you three pounds of the PB2 with, you know, um, a pound and a half of it or whatever, basically coming from the, uh, the chocolate version. Um, so maybe I'll try that next time, putting it all on the boil, just upping it to three pounds and putting some more of the chocolate as well. That should also help with some of the lack of chocolate flavor. Um, and I might up the nibs again, you know, we use one ounce per five gallons. I might bump it up to eight ounces or maybe even 10 ounces. Um, I'm not really sure from my experience, I really haven't gone like super crazy with nibs, uh, to, to find where the, uh, the, the overkill level is, you know, is it two pounds of nibs or a pound of nibs or whatever. Um, I do know they kind of add a bitter chocolate also, you know, you're not really going to get a, a, a sweet milk chocolate out of nibs, you know, so um, maybe with some more of that powder, some more of the, the nibs, um, we'll get a little closer to what we're looking for. Um, the lactose to me, it's nice, but I, when I've brewed with, with lactose, it's always like a, it always tastes a little too sweet to me. And I don't know if it's just the one pound. From what I understand, one pound is generally like the, the accepted use, you know, one pound in the five gallons. I would probably bump this down just a little bit to, to get some of that milk sweetness out of there and hopefully boost some of the, the chocolate and everything else. Um, I'd also add maybe just a touch more roasted grain. So maybe just a little more of that roasted barley, maybe a little more of the chocolate wheat uh, to help boost again, maybe a little more of the chocolate and a little more of the roastiness. But, um, other than that, I think that those are the, the uh, adjustments I'd try to make, and hopefully we get a, a little closer next time. But like I said, this is a beer style that I definitely intend to keep brewing. Um, I definitely want to nail this one for sure. Um, so, cool. Um, not super happy with it, but definitely not disappointed. I think it's a drinkable beer. I'm going to enjoy the ones that I have for sure, um, but definitely look forward to uh, brewing it again. So uh, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Um, let me know what you think. You know, I love doing these episodes and mainly I love, I love communicating about recipes. You know, it, it's really a fascinating part of this to me because, you know, you can get the same result 35 different ways of brewing. So, um, if you've brewed a peanut butter chocolate beer before, uh, you can tell me what you've done before, what you use, what you would do different. Um, always appreciate that stuff. All right, I was going to wrap it up. I'm Preston. This is the Beer Chasers. We'll see you later. Beer is good. Beer is good.